Hey students from around the world, this is Jeremy Alexander Newsom with Real Life Trading. I hope you are absolutely sensational. I'm at the uh, Real Life Trading Facebook page. And feel free if you are on Facebook like these awesome guys, uh, you can come over to the page and invite some of your friends to join. That's always a good way to get more Real Life Traders around and in and involved in the market. I think it'd be awesome. So I'm going to cover these two requests. Um, Bob talked about Facebook and Eric has a question. Eric said, any thoughts on Friday positions? Do you hold over the weekend or do you close them out? Well, Eric, good question. Oftentimes I do hold over the weekend if I'm in a trade. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't because they might get scared of how much they're gonna lose or how much they're, you know, they don't know exactly their risk tolerance. But realistically, if you're in a trade and you're holding it over the weekend, I'm assuming that you're not in a day trade. I'm assuming you're in a swing trade. And yes, I do hold over the weekends for sure. It's all about position sizing. It's all about risk management. So I want to give a giant shout out to Bob. Bob had said, told to close Facebook trade today for 2R. And again, I don't know if, it, if, this is a, if this was a swing trade, if this was a day trade. I'm not really sure. But I do know my good friend, uh, George Simples, had a trade, he wanted to get to $79, I believe was his target, and he got to it today. Uh, this gap has now filled, so now for this trading plan is now active on Facebook. Really good bounce, really good volume coming in today. We filled the gap, so now that we have three white cows in a row with good volume, I want some type of pullback and a bounce, and I will be long again on Facebook. Apple today, so we're gonna look at Apple every day in the Real Life Stock Review, had a nice, Black Candle, uh, which I was really, really hoping for, honestly, on Apple. Since we had just a huge, huge update yesterday, Shave Top Candle. I want a little bit of a pullback since this is a retest. Gap action. Want a retest, and since it looks like it's going to happen, uh, this is a little bit of a pennant. I drew a nice, uh, wrote up a nice trading plan today on Apple. And overall, this is pretty much about it at the, at the moment. You know, if we trade down to 110 or so, 110, uh, you know, somewhere right around this general area. If we pull into here and bounce, that could be very, very viable. And specifically, if we gap up Monday and anyone who went short the last few hours on Apple will be trapped, I think that'd be a really, really good buying opportunity on Apple. The overall market, ladies and gentlemen, whew, I mean, wow, picture perfect. It did exactly what we thought about, talked about, watched for, and hoped for. Um, SPY, I said bullish retest gap. If we open lower tomorrow, it could easily be viable. So we did, in fact, open today lower than we closed yesterday. Uh, here's the hourly chart on SPY. And just into the day, we got some selling pressure, which is good because my overall thought is I want SPY to kind of pull back down to this general area. Let's call it 205 and some change um, and bounce. It might not pull back that far. Maybe it only pulls back to the 10 exponential. But I do want and kind of need a little bit of a pullback. We have a high wave candle. And truth be told, ladies and gentlemen, at this point with this high wave doji, we could kind of be looking at uh, an entry or a trading plan that looks very, very similar to this. Uh, here's our horizontal entry and uh, we could have a uh, intraday trigger if it moves above that. This wick is not real. It's, uh, it is on some charts, but it's not, it's not actually accurate. This giant, giant upper wick on SPY, not accurate. So really, this is kind of uh, this would be more bearish than bullish. And if we trigger this, I would look to buy the bounce off of this gap right here. If we trade sideways on Monday, that's actually best case scenario. And then on Tuesday, if we continue higher, that would be really really nice. But I do not want to take the breakout on spy. I do not want to wait for a close above here because then I think it might be a little bit too late. I mean, we've had the retracement. This, I mean, is the place to buy. If we pull into here and then, you know, taking some targets up here would kind of be the best case scenario. But volume is here, candles are here, gaps are here. I think the market goes higher into the end of the year. And uh, at some point with this, with this next big high thrust, a lot of the bulls are going to come in. And then I think that we can start topping potentially, um, you know, up in the 215 area, maybe even a little bit higher on SPY and uh, get some type of pullback. So a pullback is definitely needed on the market, but until it happens, it's not going to. <laughs> Boom! Uh, IWM still looks nice. The Iron Condor, uh, December week five, expiring this uh, next week. We have a little bit of a candle. Some selling pressure did come in today at the very, very end of the day, which is good. And uh, you know, 120.57 is the next target on IWM. And I would expect you know a little bit of a black candle on Monday, and then a higher move on Tuesday on the pretty much the market in general. 
would make me kind of happy. Let's talk about the trading floor. There's a lot of you who mentioned to me about uh, weekly options, and you want to know if we ever play weeklies and how we do them. On the trading floor, we have something called Weeklies Wednesday, which is where we look for options that expire that week, either put sales, call sales, call, bull put spreads, bear call spreads, whatever. One of the most popular profitable ones was Amazon. This Wednesday, which was you know two days ago, uh, this Wednesday we looked at a 285, 280 uh, bull put spread that was gr granting us about 35 cents. I think maybe a little bit less, but that's about uh, six, five or six percent return for three or four days. It's really not that bad. And again, since the trading floor is every day, Monday through Friday, we get the opportunity of watching you know, what it's going to do and if it moves, how it can unravel and exit and that type of thing. We're keeping a very close eye. I don't think Amazon is insanely bullish. I'm actually a little bit more bullish to neutral. On Amazon, we are making some lower highs and uh, we got some strong, strong support at about 280. So you can see this bull put spread down here, uh, looking to do it. The other weekly Wednesday that we did was LNG. Did a 67 put sale that expired, profitable today. Uh, another one that we did was Tesla uh, put sale on Wednesday. We had somewhere down here in the two, oh, that's not Tesla, T-S-L-A. Tesla, we had a put sale down the 192 region. And uh, looking at Tesla today as well, if we close below this you know, most recent support, the 190.69, I'm much more bearish than bullish. This is a retest gap on Tesla. We are and did retest today. And I'm very, very interested to see what we do. Here's my do or die zone um, for Tesla. Very interested to see if we come into here and begin to roll over again, uh, I would be much more bearish than bullish on Tesla if that began to happen. So interested to see what happens. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys have a great next few days. Enjoy your weekend. If you guys need anything, let me know. I'm happy to help, but it has been a great week. I'm super, super excited about all of your guys' growth and real life trading and how phenomenal we are as a support group, as a as family, as friends, as a community, and of course, as traders from around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, have a great afternoon. I'll see you guys later. And until next time, remember, love life, live life, and trade it. See you.